Many people have difficulty understanding how silent, invisible rays, which cannot even be felt, could be so damaging. Pretty much most of us have seen or heard about the Japanese man by the name of Isoshi Ochi. Many YouTubers who covered topic about him, some claimed that he has been the most radioactive man ever. But that's not really correct. There were at least six people who have been exposed with more radiation. And I'm not talking about Albert Stevens. Even though during lifetime he has been exposed to 64 sieverts, this does not compare to one big dose which would, without a doubt, kill any man. Albert Stevens was given smaller dosages of radiation over a longer period of time. Isashi Ochi case is well known, since it is one of the scariest stories regarding radiation exposure. And scary not only because of the radiation, but also because of the fact that Japanese scientists kept him alive as long as possible. Considering the radiation dosage which was 17 sieverts, he shouldn't have lived for more than 14 days, but in the name of science they kept Ochi alive for 83 days. Isashi's family was also one to blame since they demanded that doctors revived him. I don't want to go deep into this topic, but he went through such a horrifying painful experience that it is hard to comprehend. Anyway, he was exposed to 17 sieverts of radiation. 5 sieverts of exposure gives victim 50% chance of survival. 10 sieverts now is pretty much a death sentence. The following 6 people have been exposed to bigger dosages of radiation than Hisashi Ochi himself. I was trying to learn more about radiation, but since I'm from Europe, some websites were not allowing me in. Thankfully, I have NordVPN, which allowed me to change my location and research this topic. Boom! Magically! I'm now in USA and no longer I have to deal with these restrictions. NordVPN sponsored me and gave us this exclusive deal. If you go to nordvpn.com slash mrslav. Also, since I wear a mask, I tend to like staying relatively anonymous. So using NordVPN, I can hide my IP address. It's not fun when internet providers know what you do. For me personally, I do a lot of research on some shady topics. So using this VPN, I can be, let's just say, a suspicious dude from Japan. Just with one simple click. Also, you can use it on a smartphone. You can find a link in the description. Join nordvpn.com slash mrslav and you will get 4 months free VPN with 30 day money back guarantee. First one with a higher radiation exposure was Louis Slotin. He had 4 sieverts higher exposure than Hisashi Ochi. So 21 sieverts. This incident is now also well known. It happened in 1946. Back in the days when nuclear science was at its infancy, Louis Slotin, a physicist, took part in the Manhattan Project. During the project there was a strange hemisphere quietly sitting on the table. And inside it there was this ball, ball made out of plutonium. You could touch this core with gloves, no problem. It would even feel warm. The bottom and upper hemispheres were made out of beryllium metal. This metal would reflect neutrons which are firing from the plutonium core. One thing that would have been exceptionally dangerous would be to completely close those parts and seal the plutonium core. Hey, but isn't that safe? Shielding such dangerous object should make it safer. No, that would be exceptionally deadly. As soon as you seal the plutonium core, it starts to emit more and more neutrons, thanks to beryllium half spheres which reflect those neutrons back at the plutonium core. It doesn't even take a second for it to reach criticality. During one fateful day, Louis Lotten was holding the upper part of the sphere with a screwdriver. He started to lower it further and further until only a small gap left. Radiation level still pretty safe, but the dude's screwdriver slipped and the spheres closed. Immediately, a blue flash lit up the room, plus other scientists which were in the room felt the heat emanating from the sphere. Louis quickly lifted the upper beryllium hemisphere and dropped it to the floor. This ended the reaction, however Louis already had been hit with 21 sieverts of radiation. He lived 9 days after the accident. 
Chernobyl story is well researched and covered. But do you know about the man which was most likely one who got the largest dose? His name Alexander Lelachenko. During the wall mayhem during Chernobyl's disaster, he knew that he had to switch off voltage in the electrolysis room. He also knew that this room was absolutely radioactive, and he prevented his younger colleagues from entering it. Lelachenko sacrificed himself by going there three times. He successfully switched off hydrogen feed to the generators. Hydrogen, as we know, is an explosive gas. Such gas would uh, have made things which already were dire even more hopeless. Even though he received 25 sieverts of radiation, Lelachenko returned home to have dinner with his wife that night. And the next day, he returned back to the Chernobyl power plant. He lived for two weeks since the explosion. In 1958, an accident occurred in Los Alamos plutonium processing facility. In this facility, plutonium was chemically separated from various compounds. These plutonium compounds were dissolved and mixed in a large tank with chemical reagents to concentrate and purify the plutonium. Basically, like the deadliest witch kettle full of dangerous ingredients. One day, Cecil Kelly, a mixing technician, was working with that mixing tank. Typically, the solution in the mixture should be 0.1 grams of plutonium per liter. But on that particular day, for some reason, it had 20 grams, or 200 times more. And since the mixture tank was big, it had more than 3 kilograms of plutonium, enough to sustain a criticality event. Cecil turned on the tank's stirrer, and thanks to a whirlpool, the plutonium sank deeper. So it was similar to Slotin's demon core. It was sealed. A blue light flashed and Cecil Kelly was a dead man walking. By the way, that blue light flashed for only 0.0002 seconds. Cecil was exposed to 36 sieverts. Also, there was a window barrier between him and the inside of the tank. But as you see, it didn't matter. After the flash, he quickly ran outside. His colleagues rushed to help and found Cecil outdoors. All he could say to the operators was, I'm burning up, I'm burning up. About 35 hours after the incident, Kelly died. Soviet nuclear-powered submarine K-19 was conducting the exercises in the Atlantic Ocean, when suddenly, a major leak in the reactor coolant system developed. Since the nuclear reactor was short on cooling liquid, it started heating up. The reactor reached 800 Celsius, which is 1470 Fahrenheit, almost the melting point of the fuel rods. You would think that there should have been a backup cooling system, but it simply wasn't there. But they came up with a plan. Eight engineering officials had to cut a ventilation valve and weld a water supply pipe to it. However, by doing that, this ventilation valve had to spread radioactive steam inside the ship. This team of people worked in a highly radioactive room. Somehow, this solution worked and the reactor didn't explode. But pretty much all crew members were irradiated. But those eight engineers suffered the most. The lowest dosage was 7.5 sieverts. But one engineer, Boris Korshilov, received a way higher dose, 54 sieverts. K-19 captain accompanied Boris Korshilov to the reactor and said, Well, Boris, do you know where you're going? Boris replied, I know, comrade captain. He was the first one who have entered the reactor. Five minutes later, Korshilov stumbled out of the reactor room, tore off his gas mask and vomited. Right on the spot, his appearances began changing. Skin not protected by clothing began to redden. Face and hands began to swell. Within two hours, they couldn't be recognizable. Engineers couldn't speak, just silently whispered, Kill us. Boris Korshilov, which received 54 sieverts, died six days later. It is hard to imagine, but uh, there are still two more men which experience even higher dosages of radiation than Boris Korshilov. This story is almost unknown, and it happened in 1971 at Kurchatov Institute of Atomic Energy. The Kurchatov Institute was at the heart of Soviet Union's atomic weapon program, so it was responsible for designing many nuclear reactors, including the Chernobyl's RBMK reactor. 
At early morning workers have completed the experiments and were in the process of shutting it down. They had to drain water from the assembly place. This water worked as a moderator. It slowed or stopped nuclear chain reaction. So it has to be drained very slowly. But who knows, maybe researchers were in a hurry to go home, but they drained the bloody thing way too fast. Uranium rods heated up, dropped on the ground and created a criticality event. Of course there was an infamous blue flash, then the rods quickly melted and the reactor ended. Even though this incredibly powerful radiation lasted for few milliseconds, one technician Vasilyev was irradiated with 60 sieverts. He was standing on the ground close where the uranium rods fell. He died a next day later from a heart attack. Also, another technician was on the floor and he got irradiated with 20 sieverts, so he also had more sieverts than Hisashi Ochi himself. This story was kept secret for a long time, since there were rumors that during this event a radioactive cloud traveled to a nearby city called Moscow. This is by far the most irradiated man that we know of. It all happened in Wood River Junction nuclear facility. Similar to many other processing plants, it was used to recover highly enriched uranium from fuel element production. The safety standards were quite lacking at that facility. There were the special 11 liter plastic containers that would hold either concentrated uranium solution or trichloroethylene. These bottles were elongated, so the uranium solution didn't have enough thickness to create criticality. The problem was that these canisters literally look the same, besides the label, which described the contents of the canister. Those labels were old and some had to be attached with rubber bands. One technician by the name of Robert Peabody took a canister of trichloroethylene, which is a solvent, and poured it into a mechanical mixer. But wait, that was not trichloroethylene. He accidentally took a canister of uranium solution and poured it into a mixer full of sodium carbonate. Later, other technicians found out that the label had fallen off the canister. This caused a criticality event. He literally created an uncontrolled nuclear reactor. The contents of the mixing tank splashed Peabody with a radioactive solution. He quickly ran towards emergency shack, tearing off his clothing. No naked, he failed to reach emergency shack and fell down. Peabody was exposed to 100 sieverts. That's more than 10 times guaranteed lethal dose of radiation. He died 49 hours after the exposure. The ambulance that transported Peabody to the hospital was so badly contaminated that it had to be buried.